Okay, this is chapter 13 of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. 13. Mr. Ward was at the front of the classroom reading out a passage from their Russian history textbook. He swiped something from the board and Pip watched as a crack of sunlight climbed up the back of his bright shirt. She waited. When the bell finally rang for lunch, Mr. Ward called over the scraping chairs. Read chapter 3 before next class, and if you want to get ahead, Frosty on over to chapter 4 as well. He chuckled at his own joke. You coming, Pip? Connor said, swinging his backpack onto one shoulder. Um, yeah, I'll come find you guys in a minute, she said. I need to ask Mr. Ward something first. You need to ask Mr. Ward something, huh? Mr. Ward had overheard. That's ominous. I hope you haven't started thinking about the coursework already. No. Well, yes, I have, Pip said, but that's not what I want to ask you. She waited until they were only they were the only two left in the classroom. What is it? Mr. Ward glanced down at his watch. You have ten of my minutes before I start panicking about the Panini Q. Yeah, sorry, Pip said, grasping inside for her courage. Um, oops. Everything okay? Mr. Ward asked, sitting back on his desk, arms and legs crossed. Worrying about your application? I don't think you need to worry. I've already started on your letter of recommendation and... No, thanks, but it's not that. She took a breath and blew out her, her top lip. I, when I interviewed you before, you said you didn't have anything to do with Andy in the last two years of school. Yes, correct, he blinked. She wasn't in any of my classes after sophomore year. Okay, but her courage returned all at once and her words braced each other out. One of Andy's friends said that, excuse the language, and he referred to you as an asshole and other unsavory words sometime in the weeks before she went missing. The why was hiding there beneath her words. She didn't need to say it. Oh, Mr. Ward said, rubbing the dark hair back from his face. He looked at her and sighed. Well, I was hoping this wouldn't come up. I don't see what good it can do to dwell on it now, but I can see you're being very thorough with your project. Pip nodded, her silence beckoning an answer. Mr. Ward shifted. I don't feel too comfortable about it, saying unpleasant things about a student who has lost her life. He glanced up at the classroom door and scooted over to shut it. I didn't have much to do with Andy at school, but as Naomi's dad, I knew her, of course. And it was in that capacity, through Naomi, that I learned some things about Andy. Yes, no way of saying, no easy way of saying it, but she was a bully. She was bullying another girl in their grade. I can't remember her name now. There was, there was some sort of incident, a video that Andy had posted online. Pip was both surprised and not really at all. Yet another secret in Andy Bell's life. I knew enough to understand that Addie, Andy would be in trouble with both the school and the police for what she'd done, Mr. Ward continued. And I, I thought it was a shame because it was the first week back after spring break and exams were coming up. He sighed again. What I should have done when I found out was tell the principal about the incident. But the school has a non-tolerance policy on bullying, and I knew Andy would be expelled immediately. I, well, I just couldn't do it. Even though she was a bully, I couldn't live with myself knowing I'd played a part in ruining a student's future. So what did you do? Pip asked. I look up her father's contact details and I called him the first day of school after the break. You mean the Monday of the week Andy disappeared? Mr. Ward nodded. Yes, I guess it was. I called Jason Bell and I told him everything I'd learned and said that he needed to have a very serious talk with his daughter about bullying and consequences, and I suggested restricting her online access. I said I was trusting him to sort it out, otherwise I would have no choice but to inform the school and have Andy expelled. And what did he say? Well, he was thankful that I was giving his daughter a second chance she possibly didn't deserve, and he promised he would talk to her. I'm guessing now that when Jason did speak to Andy, he mentioned that I was the source of the information. So if I was the target of some choice words from Andy that week, I'm not entirely surprised, I must say. Disappointed is all. Pip sighed with undisguised relief. What's that for? I'm just glad you weren't lying for a worse reason. Think you've read too many mystery novels, Pip. Why not some historical biographies instead? He smiled gently. They can be just as disturbing, she paused. You'd never told anyone before, had you? About Andy's bullying? Of course not. It seemed pointless after everything happened, and sensitive too. He scratched his chin. I try not to think about it because I get lost in butterfly effects theories. What if I had just told the school and Andy was expelled that week? Would it have changed the outcome? Would the conditions that led to Sal killing her not have been in place? Would those two still be alive? I understand, Pip said. And you don't remember the girl Andy bullied? 
No, sorry, he said. Naomi would remember. You could ask her about it. Not sure what this has to do with the use of media in criminal investigations, though. He raised his eyes in a scolding way. Well, I, have decided, I haven't decided on my final title yet. Okay, well, don't go falling down a rabbit hole. He smiled, wagged his finger. And now I'm running away from you because I'm desperate for a tuna melt. He dashed into the corridor and Pip felt lighter, watching him go. That wasn't as hard as she thought it would be, and now she had some answers, another real lead to follow, and one less name on her list. But the lead was taking her back to Naomi, and Pip would have to look her in the eyes again, like she didn't think there was something secret hiding there. Pippa Fitz Amobi, 9-12-19, Capstone Project Log, Entry 15, Transcript of Second Interview with Naomi Ward, Pip. Okay, recording. Your dad told me that he found out Andy was bullying another girl in your year. Cyberbullying. He thought there was some online video involved. Do you know anything about this? Naomi. Yeah, like I said, I thought Andy was bad news. Can you tell me more about it? There was a girl in our grade, Natalie Del... Natalie da Silva, and she was pretty and blonde too. They looked quite similar, actually, and I guess Andy felt threatened by her because at the start of our senior year, Andy started spreading rumors about her and finding ways to humiliate her. If Sal and Andy didn't start seeing each other until that December, how did you know all this? I was friends with Nat. We had biology together. Oh, what kind of rumors was Andy starting? The kind of disgusting things only a teenage girl could think up. Things like her family was incestuous, that Nat watched people undress in the changing rooms and touched herself. Those kinds of things. You think Andy did that because Nat was pretty and she felt threatened by her? I actually think that was the extent of her thought process. Andy wanted to be the girl everyone not wanted. Nat was competition, so, Natty, so Andy had to take her down. Did you know about this video at the time? Yeah, it got shared all over social media. It wasn't taken down until a few days later, until someone reported it. When was this? During spring break. So what was the video? As far as I know, Andy was hanging out with some friends from school, including her two minions. Chloe, Birch, and Emma Hutton? Yeah, and some other kids. Not Sal or Nat or any of us. And there was this guy, Chris Parks, who everyone knew Nat liked. I don't know all the details, but Andy either used his phone or told him what to do, and they were sending flirty texts to Nat. And Nat was responding because she liked Chris and thought it was him. And then Andy slash Chris asked Nat to send a video of her topless with her face in it so he'd know it was really her. And Nat did it? Yeah, a little naive, but she thought she was talking to just Chris. The next thing we all knew, the video was online, and Andy and loads of other people were sharing it. The comments were so horrible, and practically everyone at school saw it before it got taken down. Nat was inconsolable. She even skipped the first two days back at school after break because she was so humiliated. Did Sal know Andy was behind it? Well, I mentioned it to him. He didn't approve, obviously, but he just said, It's Andy's drama. I don't want to get involved. Sal was just too laid back about some things. Was there anything else that happened between Nat and Andy? Yeah, actually, I might have been the only one Nat told because she was crying in biology af right after it happened. What? During that fall semester, the school was putting on a play, The Crucible, I think. Nat got the main part. Apparently, Andy had wanted it and she was really pissed off. So after the parts were posted, Andy cornered Nat and she told her, Yes? Sorry, I forgot to mention some context. Nat's brother, Daniel, who was like five years older than us, he had worked at the school part-time as a janitor when we were like 15 or 16, only for a year while he was looking for other jobs. Okay. So Andy cornered Nat and told her that when Daniel was still working at the school, he had sex with Andy, even though she was only 15 at the time. Andy told Nat to drop out of the play or she'd go to the police and say she was statutory raped by Nat's brother. So Nat dropped out because she was scared of what Andy would do. Was it true? Did Andy have a relationship with Nat's brother? I don't know. Nat didn't know for sure either. That's why she dropped out of the play, but I don't think she ever asked him. Do you know where Nat is now? Do you think I could talk to her? I'm not really in contact with her, but I know she's back at home with her parents. I heard some stuff about her, though. What stuff? Um, I think in college she was involved in some kind of fight. She got arrested and charged with assault, and I think she spent some time in prison. Oh, God. I know. Can you give me her number?